go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. Now, you need to understand a couple of things. This whole thing of baptism, this isn't something Jesus went and sat in the cave and said, hmm, what can we do to really kind of set ourselves? I don't know what we'll do. Every time somebody says, I want to follow you, we'll say, really? we will say, yeah, we'll say, great. And then we'll just take it and we'll just dump it. We'll just dump it in the river, bring it back up, we'll all have a good laugh, and that's what we'll do. That's not how it worked. There was this guy named John the Baptist. John was part of this sect of people that that's what they did. They baptized people. They baptized people to wash them of their sins or to clean them metaphorically from their sins, so to speak. And Jesus made this, makes this incredible decision here in Matthew. He says, you know what? He says, I'm going to take this practice and I'm going to make it ours. I'm going to make this a part of what we do. If you're going to be a follower of me, meaning Christ, this is what you will do. After you've accepted me and you've made the God your God, after you've asked me into your heart, I am going to challenge you to say to the world, that's my dad. You know what? It, 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 may, it may make me unpopular. It may make people think I'm weird. It may it make people not want to be my friend anymore. But I'm going to say to the world, I want my people to have to declare to the world, that's my dad. And you, so you see here in Matthew chapter 3, in verse 13, it says this. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him. He said, wait, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me because John knew who he was. And Jesus said, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said this, this is my son whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. And when we baptize these four people today, you may not see a dove descend from heaven and light on their shoulder. But you will, you will hear God. You won't hear an audible voice. But God will be saying, this is my child, in whom I'm really pleased. And what we believe about baptism is simply this. It signifies several different things. One of them is this testimony saying in the world, that's my dad. Yes, it is. It's him. He's my dad. That's my bloodline. My, his blood is pumping through my veins. I admit it. I acknowledge it. I'm proud of it. I want the world to know. The other thing that it is, though, is this idea, and this is what people have a hard time with. It's this idea that here's the water, here's the person. It's the idea that, you know what, this is me. Before Christ, before I became a Christian, this was me. I died. I'm literally saying, Lord, I died to myself. I'm born again. I'm a new person now. I'm born again, and now I'm a new person. That's what it symbolizes. Now, I'm going to show you a few more verses. Go to Acts chapter 2. That's for me. Just tell them I'll call them back. I'm busy. i, I got I to finish this. <laughs> In Acts chapter 2, verse 36, it says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made, uh, has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. He's telling all these people about who this is. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. They said to Peter and the other apostles, What shall we do? And Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins. Repent and what? Be baptized. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord will call. Go to Acts chapter 16. Now, just over a few verses. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Paul and Silas, they're in prison. It says this, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Did you know that when you praise God, when you sing His songs, when you walk through your day focused on Him, people are listening. People are listening. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. 
The jailer woke up when he saw the prison doors open. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself because the pro he thought the prisoners would have been, uh, been escaped and he would have gotten lots of trouble. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, you're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Then he spoke the word, and, and, and at that hour the jailer took the wound, all those kinds of things. And then, if you look over to uh, Acts chapter 18, verse 7. It says this. <clears throat> then Paul at the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titus, uh, the worshiper of God. Christmas, the synagogue ruler, and the entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard him believed, and they were what? Baptized. They were baptized. They believed, and they were baptized. And then, if you go to Matthew, the end of Matthew, and um, I need somebody to go get to bring the kids in. Can you go bring the kids in? And Matthew, bring them right up here to the front row. The very end of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 16. This is Christ. This is the person that we believe in. These are his last words that he ever uses while on earth. The very last thing he has to say is this, verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and he said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Does it end there? What does it say to do also? Yeah. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and share them with you always to the very end. Last but not least, you guys come right up here. You can come right over here, guys. Scott, you guys come right over here. Last but not least, go to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 15. <coughs> Now, here's what it says in chapter 5, verse 15. All you kids can come on down here. See, now, you can just stay right there. You can just stay right there. You guys can all just sit right here on the floor. Just kind of spread out. Just kind of spread out. Just <coughs> yeah, sure you can see. You make sure you can sit where you can see over here, guys. You make sure you can see where you can see. You guys all see? Today we're talking. How many guys have ever heard of the word baptized? Have you ever heard of being baptized? Today we're going to baptize some people. And when people get baptized, that basically means it's like they've asked Jesus to come into their heart and be their Lord and Savior. It's like, I give my life to you, Jesus. And then they do something really, really extraordinary. They get up in front of everybody, they put on some dark clothes. They get up in front of everybody, they go into water, and then we take them in that water, we put them under the water and bring them back up. Now why do we do that? Well, I want to show you something here that it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. It says, and he died for all. Who died for all? That's right, Jesus. That those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Now listen, guys, and you know what? I gotta kind of talk kind of loud because I want your parents to hear this part. They don't want to listen to something. <laughs> so from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we were once regarded, we regarded Christ this way, and we so no longer do. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New He's a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. Did you hear what I just said, guys? 
I said, it says that anyone's in Christ, if you give your life to Christ, you become a new creation. Now, what does that mean? And uh, Ron, the man, you want to kind of come up here and get, come be ready. Now, here's what it means, guys. Are you ready for this? It means this. And this is kind of, when they get baptized, it's going to kind of symbolize what this means. But when you give your life to Christ, okay, I have baptism waters right here. See the water? See it? It kind of like this. It's just a cup, isn't it? See the cup? When we become a Christian, we're whatever we are. We're whatever we made ourselves to be. All your work, all your effort, all your all everything, all your education, all your experiences, this is kind of who you are. When we give ourselves to Christ, it says something amazing happens. We give ourselves to Christ, we go down in the water, but out of that comes something completely different. A new creation. You see it? A new creation. That's what he does. And you know what? For some people, it can mean a number of things. Isn't this pretty? It's beautiful. Some people, he doesn't just make them a new creation. Some of them, he puts a song in their life. He gives them this song that they just sing all the time. Just because they love Jesus so much. Other people, you know what he does? He'll take other people, and what he'll do, he'll wash them too. Just an ordinary cup. This person right here says, you know what, I don't have any special gifts. There's nothing special about me. I'm just a cup. I'm just a cup. And Jesus says nonsense. You're not just a cup. You're something special. And he takes those folks, and he changes them. You know what he does? He makes them something very precious. Did you know that it says the Bible? It says the Bible, it says that when you accept Jesus, he comes and lives inside of you. You know what else it also says? It also says it's like you carry around this light in your heart. When you go, so anybody ever know anybody that's been mean? Anybody? Anybody here ever been in times when you're really sad? Anybody ever know somebody that's been sad? Your parents and their hands going up everywhere. <laughs> what it says is this. It says, where people are sad or where people are hurting, where people think they're hard, it says that there's darkness there. There's darkness. You know what God does? He makes you a new creation. And He fills you with light. So when you go to these places where it was once dark, guess what? You bring light. And that's what we do. We bring light. Now I want you to see this one. This is my favorite one of all. Anybody know what these are? These are just, what are they? What do you think it is? Close. Close, yeah. Close, anybody know? Charcoal. Charcoal. What can God do not do with charcoal? What can God do with charcoal? Do you think of anything? Now, maybe He can light it so it provides warmth for a little while or something like that, right? Maybe? But here's what God does God takes even charcoal, even nasty old, dirty old, stinky old, get you dirty old charcoal. You know what God does with that? He takes that. That's what God does. That's what God does. This says we're a new creation. It says who we were when we became a Christian is not the same person we are after. It's not the same person. We're different. We're a new creation.